Now that my design documents have been uploaded into my takeoff project and my project setup is complete, I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And now the actual QTO application is going to load. Uh, once the application loads, uh, you're going to see that we're going to load up our model that we've extracted from our Revit application. And then I'm going to do just a little bit of configuration uh, of my workspace. I'm going to configure some of my uh, palettes. I'm going to explain a little bit about the interface as well as just organize things a little bit. So you can see I'm just about ready to go. The first thing that comes up is uh, the question whether or not I want to select an import of information or elements from my uh, catalog. And I have pre-configured a catalog for use within a QTO. This is, uh, once I do my model takeoff, we can then organize our elements into these uh, categories. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and load um, our uh, QTO application itself. Now, like I said a few seconds ago, I'm going to go ahead and pin some of these palettes in place because these are the ones I'm going to be using mostly. We're going to pin our takeoff palette. I'm going to move this over. And uh, the last thing I want to do is turn on my navigator and uh, have that pinned here as well. Just taking a few moments to just set up my workspace. Get this all organized. And then down here at the bottom, I have what's called my takeoff uh, workbook. I'm going to just pin that down here at the bottom and I should be just about ready to go. Okay, so the first uh, portion of the application that I wanna talk about is up here at the top. This is called the application toolbar. This is where you access probably about 90% of the functionality of the product, including all of my ability to be able to pan, zoom, rotate, uh, do all of my quantification measuring of things, as well as marking up these documents. The next item I wanted to talk about is the document palette. You'll notice that all of the documents that uh, I've brought into this project are actually included right here. So I've got my 3D model. This is a model that is interactive. I can click on it. I can query it. I can find out information about all of these model components. I can also easily zoom in. Take a closer look at this model. I have the same zoom cube feature that I had inside of Reddit. So if I want to take a look at the right side of this model, perhaps view from the upper left, uh, isometric view. I can also very easily go in and take a look at all of the plans, sections, and elevations that I brought into this project. And these are directly from the Revit views and sheets that I have created. Right here is my first floor plan. Another example, which is one that's a little bit interesting, is my 3D view of my, uh, I have done a wall systems isometric view. I'm going to show you the way uh, this gets color coded and uh, organized once I do the model takeoff. The next item that we have down here beyond the document palette is called the, uh, some people call this the takeoff list, uh, others call it the project catalog. This is where I really began to organize how I want to quantify this design. Now, I do have a catalog built in here. Uh, there are no design components uh, and, or no quantities that have been extracted from this model yet, so this is essentially uh, blank. Then down here at the bottom, let's select a different view so this will be a little bit more apparent. I'm going to go ahead and pick my Elevation East and load that. We've got a really fantastic tool down here called the Project Navigator. This is really great, especially when you're dealing with a very large sheet and you want to very uh, easily pan and zoom around uh, the sheet without having to uh, uh, hit any hotkeys or anything. So I'll just zoom in on a portion of the geometry here in this elevation. And you'll notice how this little uh, box is essentially a magnifying glass. It allows me to be able to move around in my navigator and to highlight portions of the uh, sheet or model that I'm looking at in a zoomed in fashion. It's a really nice way to be able to keep track of where you are on the sheet itself. And then last but not least, we've got down here the, the uh, actual takeoff workbook. This is where my quantities are going to be showing up once I get done doing the model takeoff. Now, I really like to think about the, uh, the workbook as basically the spreadsheet of this project and it's sort of the translation where we'll translate the 3D and the 2D design and engineering geometry into a spreadsheet view of quantities, which is uh, how estimators are typically uh, very comfortable with looking at the results of the quantification. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something incredibly powerful. Now, imagine printing out all of these sheets 
uh, plan sections and elevations, everything you need to do to do your uh, typical business of quantifying a design. Uh, it could take hours, days, uh, maybe even weeks to quantify an entire building design for <clears throat> the purposes of estimating when using uh, traditional methods like measuring uh, objects either on screen or measuring them with rulers, etc., on your desktop, as well as typing all of that information into a spreadsheet that can be timely, uh, that can be very uh, um, slow and take a lot of time, uh, and it's not very cost effective. So let's just go up here. I'm going to select my takeoff, and I'm going to do take, uh, model takeoff. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through this entire Revit model. Uh, it's going to make a couple of passes. The first pass is uh, quantifying all of the model components. Uh, the second pass that it's going to run through is called cross-referencing, and cross-referencing is very powerful. I'll show you what the results of that are here in just a moment. But really what that does is it not only locates an element like a wall or a door or a window in the model, but it also locates everywhere that that object shows up in my she sheets or views, which could include you know, one wall may show up in multiple floor plans, it may show up in multiple sections, etc. And QTO allows you to actually automatically zoom to the location of uh, that element uh, and a view that you select. So I'm just about done. The last thing that's going to do <coughs> is called auto mapping. And what this is really doing is that QTO is trying to see if this model has ever been taken off before. And it really does a really great job of remembering how you've categorized things. Uh, in past models that you've taken off, and this really helps speed up the process of getting your model organized uh, and ready for your final quantification. So that's just about done, and you're going to see here in just a moment that QTO is actually uh, going to find uh, between four and 5,000 objects, I believe, in this model, and then it's going to organize all of those objects into my takeoff palette. Okay, now that we're done, we can see that there's actually 4,866 objects in this design. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And then I'm going to go over here into my takeoff list or my catalog, and I'm going to show you how powerful this is. What I can see here is that right there is my small office building. There are 4,728 objects that have been counted in this design. I can expand this by using my twist down arrow. And for instance, what did I find here? I can find, for instance, under my windows, it found 88 windows in this project. It found 462 walls. If I expand that a little bit further, I can see all of the different wall types, etc., that were found. Let's expand this down a little bit. I can see that we have 53 4 and 7 8 inch partition walls. We've got 154 4 and 1 8 inch furring interior walls. So what I can do now is I can see all of that. Uh, I can see the quantities, but you'll also see down here in my workbook, I'm going to go ahead and expand the small office building uh, category down here. I'm going to flip this so that the uh, walls come up to the top. Now look at this. What I have done is I've quantified all of the walls in this design in just a few minutes. I found, for instance, under my 4 and 7 eighths inch partition walls, that there's 11,951.666 uh, three square feet of wall in this project. Now, using traditional manual takeoff processes, that would have taken probably hours at a minimum, maybe even days to be able to just simply come up with that quantification. And by double clicking on the object, I can see all of the individual instances uh, of that wall uh, in this project. Now. That is very, very powerful. Uh, what I would say is even more powerful than the quantification of being able to see that so quickly is the ability to be able to find all of the instances of one of these particular walls in this design very quickly.